All right. It is my privilege and honor to bring to you a short uh, message tonight on uh, the month of Tammuz. Uh, let's give me just a second to take, catch my breath here. I've uh, been having some uh, walking pneumonia issues, and uh, it's a little more dancing than I <laughs> was quite ready for. My, my heart and my head were willing, but the lungs are saying, hey, slow it down a little bit, old guy. <laughs> All right. Amen. Amen. In breath of the Holy Spirit, fill them up. So uh, the month of Tammuz uh, is a month that is associated with a number of different things, first of which is going to be the tribe of Reuben. Each of the uh, 12 months is associated with one of the tribes. Uh, Reuben, remember, is the first son of Jacob and uh, the son of Leah. Uh, Genesis 49 verses 3 to 4 contain the blessing of Jacob for Reuben. Now, it says, Reuben, you are my firstborn, my might, the first sign of my strength, excelling in honor, excelling in power. But then it adds, turbulent as the water, you will no longer excel. For you, when you went up into your father's bed, onto my couch, and defiled it. Now, Reuben is characterized as fickled, unstable as water, condemned to no longer have the excellency that he once had, the, the position of the firstborn of the tribe of Israel, due to his crime of having committed sexual relations with his father's wife, Billah. Now, we also have the association of the month of Tammuz with the letter Chet. The letter Chet represents the, the number four in Hebrew. The numbers uh, are represented by the letters, and Chet is the fourth letter. And the Chet is composed of a Vav, representing uh, man, and a crown zayin. So here is the vav, and here's the crown, the zayin, the crown being uh, the man with the sword of the spirit. And there's a yoke between them. Okay, this little hat that's there. So this is a picture of Messiah. Uh, and the yoke between them is a picture of the covenant of God and man. Now, throughout the Old Testament, the yoke of foreign nations is placed upon Israel uh, as a punishment for not keeping the covenant of God. Uh, yet, with all the repetition throughout the Old Testament of yoke being associated with something that the, that the Lord has placed upon Israel due to their disobedience, we have, in Matthew uh, chapter 11, verses 29 and 30, we have Yeshua saying, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Okay. From the example of Reuben, unstable as water, contrasted with the letter Chet, with its uh, covenantal association of the yoke between God and man, we can begin to understand why the catchphrase understood by the Jews is guard your heart and your eyes. Uh, we can also understand why it is the month that's associated with covenantal alignment. Uh, understood not only as an alignment of ourselves with the covenant of God, but also in understanding that we should align ourselves, and more specifically, we should align everything that we do, all the covenants that we make with our fellow man, they should be aligned with God as well. His righteousness, his justice, his chesed. Now, the scripture verse, and this is small, so I will read it for you, but right down here for those of you in the front row seats, you can see that it says Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 26, and Deuteronomy 30, verses 15 to 19. And the key portions of this is that God is setting before us a covenant and that we can choose either life uh, and prosperity or death and destruction. And this is important because how we keep or don't keep that covenantal relationship with God has curses or it has blessings. And the question is, which of these do we want to have? I would say choose the, the, the blessings, not the curses. 
So one of the questions is, so, okay, well, if this is the fourth month, we get the chat, we get that, but why the name Tammuz? Right? Why, why did they choose that name? Now, Tammuz is the name of this month given to it by the people, not of Israel, but of Babylon. Tammuz was initially, initially a god of the shepherds, uh, but eventually he became known as the sun god. And in chapter 8 of Ezekiel, uh, we have Ezekiel being shown that the temple of God in Jerusalem and, and shown the corruption both of the people and of the priests. And in verse 14, it talks about at the northern gate, remember we just talked about coming in by way of the northern gate and leaving at Rosh Kadesh through the southern gate. But at the northern gate, what Ezekiel saw was women who were weeping for Tammuz. And it gets worse than that. It, it gets worse than that. So the, the, at uh, the northern gate, they see that uh, Ezekiel sees women that are weeping for Tammuz. And it gets worse still because in verse 16 of chapter 8 of Ezekiel, uh, in the outer courtyard, there are assembled men who have their backs turned to the temple of God, who have literally turned their backs on God and in God's temple to face the rising sun through the eastern gate to worship the sun. Now, carefully consider that. Right? If they are facing the east and the sun is coming up through the eastern gate, it places it specifically at two times of the year. It's either the season of Pesach, right, because the equinox, that's when it's going to be, the sun is going to rise directly east, or it's the, the equinox in the fall, the time of Sukkot. And so here, at two of the, the most holiest times that we have, the priests of God were turning their backs to God and worshiping this God who is no God at all. So... And yet the Jews following their captivity in Babylon did, not, uh, did adopt this name for the fourth month. And we can begin to see why that is when we consider uh, a verse from Lamentations. Uh, the verse reads in the New uh, King James Version, it says, Judah has gone into captivity under affliction and hard servitude. She dwells among the nations. She finds no rest. All of her persecutors overtake her in dire straits. Now, we have Rabbi Shemol ben Yitzhak, and he was a rabbi that lived during the time frame of the uh, 11th to 12th centuries, early 12th century, died in 1105, lived in France. He's recognized as being one of the greatest Torah scholars that there ever was. And what he said about this verse is at the very end of this verse, where it says, in dire straits, uh, being Hametzarim, um, he said that this could also be translated as between the days of distress. And that was specifically pointing Israel to the concept of what occurs between the three weeks of, of sorrow that are the 17th of Tammuz through the 9th of Av. Now, on the 17th of Tammuz, we have five national tragedies that occur on that specific date when you look at it from the Hebrew calendar perspective. If you look at it from the Gregorian calendar, they're all over the place. But in the Hebrew calendar, they line up. So you can begin to see that, that it really does come down to whether or not we guard our eyes and guard our heart. The concept of being yoked to our God, yoked to Yeshua, not out of a forced yoke of servitude, not like we were in with the nations, but out of love for Yeshua, love for God. If we love him, remember it says, keep his commandments, he tells us. If we love him, we keep his covenant, and everything we do should flow from love. Keeping the covenant between man and Yeshua, that is the easy yoke, the easy burden to bear, if we love Yeshua. If we do... Great things can come from that. You have on the third of Tammuz, you have Joshua who's fighting uh, the Amorites. And the fight was continuing. He had been given instructions to, to wipe them out. But the day was getting long in the tooth. It was getting ready to, for the sun to go down. And the very next day would be Shabbat. And they could not fight on Shabbat. So they would have to break off from the instructions that they had been given by God 
to wipe these people out because of their great sin and to stop the battle. Instead, Joshua prays to God that God would stop the sun and the moon and the sky and that he would give them the time that they need to complete the task that God himself had laid upon him. And God does it. Okay, so if we have faith, if we love God, there's no limit to what can be done. But we also have, on the 17th of Tammuz, the opposite side of that coin, when we step away from keeping the covenant with God. On the 17th of Tammuz, Moses is up on the mountain. He's receiving the copy of the Ten Commandments. It was written by the finger of God himself, magical. They bore their own weight. They were in this stone of sapphire blue. And God tells him, Moses, you need to get down the mountain and see what's going on and see what the people are doing. And Moses comes down the mountain to find that the people have convinced Aaron to build a golden calf and to worship and to dance around this golden calf like what they had in Egypt, even though they had just received the Ten Commandments and just heard the voice of God speaking to them uh, not 40 days earlier. And of course, the Ten Commandments that God wrote with his own finger get dashed into pieces. So if we're not careful to do what it is that God has called us to do, we will have calamities that come upon us. Remember, it's blessing or curse. Choose this day whom you shall serve. The 17th of Tammuz has five recognized national calamities that occur, tragedies that occur. The first of which being the golden calf and then the breaking of the Ten Commandments, the original stone tablets that, uh, that God had written with his own finger. But we also have, during the time of the first temple, we have the, the city of Jerusalem being under siege, and because they're under siege, the animals that they had to do the daily sacrifices eventually run out, and they have no more animals to do daily sacrifices. So the daily sacrifice came to an end on the 17th of Tammuz. Uh, likewise, on the 17th of Tammuz, the walls of Jerusalem were breached, and, and the Babylonians and the, the Romans come pouring into the city to, to lay waste to those that are there and to eventually gain access to the, to the temple as well. It will be the ninth of Av for both the first and second temples when a fire breaks out at about the same time in the afternoon in both cases that destroys the temple in both cases. But also on the 17th of Tammuz, we have the setting up of a golden pagan altar inside the Holy of Holies. We also have the taking and the burning of Torah uh, that occurs on the 17th of Tammuz uh, during the second temple period time, uh, foreshadowing the great destruction of Torah and the great torment that, uh, that those who love Torah would be under in the coming 2,000 years. So these five national tra tragedies that all occur on the 17th of Tammuz is why we have a fast on the 17th of Tammuz to observe these things and to recall them and to think about what it is that this month is about. Remember, keeping the covenant, not stepping away from that which God has called us to do. And um, this is really what the month of Tammuz is about. Uh, remember the letter Chet, that yoke that Yeshua would have us under, the easy yoke versus the yoke if we choose curse, that is the yoke of being under the nations, the difficult yoke. So you have the contrast between those, the love of Torah, the love of Yeshua, the love of our Lord and God. And remember, our covenants matter, whether they're the covenants that we keep with our God or whether they're the covenants that we keep with each other. Amen?